Yes, truly, we will live by our confessions. Because we may read the Bible, but we may not say what the Bible says. It's important that we speak what the word says and apply it to our lives. And one of the strongest way the word of God uh, into your life is by declaring the word, changing your way of thinking. Because if I don't change my way of thinking, my words are not going to be good. We were born into the family of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. We were born to the family of God by the incorruptible seed of God's word. And Christ has made us brand new creations or we are new in the inside of us. But the spirit carries a body and also a soul which is our mind, which means we have to submit to the Holy Spirit who is inside of us. Uh, maybe our body will not agree with all what we want to do, all what we, uh, what we should do, but the, but the Holy Spirit inside us would, would train our minds to live according to his word. And uh, when we have not grown in the Lord, we can be born again, but we are, when we still remain as people, as babes in Christ, then we, we start moving by our emotions. We are led by what people say, how we need to look before people, and uh, easily offended. There are so many things that happen. But thank God for his grace. He still bears with us. And he, and he calls us his own children that we may walk in the newness of life. God didn't call us to walk in the oldness of the letter but to walk in the newness of life. It's in the book of Romans chapter 7. You know, some people read Romans 7 and they kind of think, well, it's talking to... Uh, me and you know I like to do what I want to do but I do what I don't want to do when you come to those scriptures you get stuck and you think yeah that's right that's me that's me and I really want to do things but then I still can't do but that's talking about the old man it's talking about what the old man and how the old man was but if you come down the scripture it says thank God Christ delivered the Richard man that's what Paul says and then it says in uh, in, in uh, Romans 8, 1, where it says, there is now, therefore, there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Now there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. So when it comes to the place where you walk with, with the Lord, you understand that you are free from condemnation. Don't live in your past but live the new man. If you, live the, if you try to live by the past, then you will always have the results that you had in the past. But if you live the new man, you will start seeing things differently. Your voice is going to be changed. Your, your vocabulary is going to change. And you're not going to speak like the way you speak, you used to speak. In Romans 7 and verse 6 it says, But now we are delivered from the law or being Delivered from the law simply means of all the rituals of the law or the curse of the law. We've been delivered from the curse of the law. That being dead, wherein we were held, that we should serve in the newness of the spirit, not according to the oldness of the letter. We, we are living in the, in the newness of the spirit. We are supposed to be serving the Lord in the newness of the spirit, led by the Holy Spirit. Not by, led by certain rules and regulations that we place before us, and I'm trying to be a good person, I'm trying to do good. I want to be a good person, and you know, you're not very sure about your salvation, so you want to do your best. Just like every religious person will say, do good, be good, see good, so that things will go right with you. It doesn't go right that way. Be good, do good, see good. 
you need to be led by the Holy Spirit. Right? That you should walk in the newness of the Spirit, not according to the oldness of the letter. Not walk according to the old person. You're strong in your in, in, in character now. It says in the book of Romans, chapter 6 and verse 14, you have dominion. For sin has no dominion over you. But you have dominion. If sin doesn't have dominion over you, you have the authority to live righteous. For you are not under the law, but under grace. If you are under grace, then you're, you have been empowered to live above sin. We struggle all the time. As Christians, when they struggle all the time, they, are still, they haven't still understood the new person. They've never decided or they have never understood what it means to live the right life of the rest. I have come into the rest. I have come into the rest to live according to the new man. And none of the promises should ever be away from me. I have come into this newness of life I'm going to walk in the newness of life, glorifying the Father. Romans 8 and verse, or Romans 6 and verse uh, 4 says, Therefore we are baptized with him. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. Just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even we should walk in the newness of life. Even we walk in the newness of life. Just as Christ was resurrected from the dead. Imagine when Jesus came out from the dead. Everybody would have thought, my, demon spirit especially. They would have said, how come he rose from the dead? It is impossible. It was impossible for a man to be raised from the dead but thank God he rose from the dead and what a glorious life we have and God compares our new nature that we should live in the newness of life just as Christ rose from the dead that's a miracle that's the greatest miracle that could take place in a person's life the greatest miracle is the new life that Christ gives you the new life that you have received of him the very nature of God, that you should no longer walk in the oldness of the letter, but walk in the newness of life. We should also uh, walk in the newness of life. It's a new life. Wherever you stumble, you, 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 you immediately look back and see where you stumbled and say, Lord, forgive me. I'm changing my way of thinking. And let me, let me never stumble again. Let me never fall into this rut again. I'm going to be, I'm not going to just fall all the time. But I'm going to walk in the newness of life. Wherever you stumble, stop there for a moment and say, okay, this is the reason. I'm going to walk in the newness of life. Christ has called me to enjoy all that he has for me, all the good that he has for me. I'm going to walk in the newness of life. Satan is a liar. He comes and talks about my old person. He comes and talks to me about what the situation is. But I talk by faith. You need to talk by faith. If you really want to experience the life of God, you need to talk out your faith. Because you don't live by sight, you live by faith. If you start living by sight, you will always consider the circumstances. You'll always consider the circumstances. But you wouldn't consider that you're a child of God. That you're a heavenly being. That your conversation is of heaven. Philippians 4 it says. Uh, Philippians 3 I believe. Where it says your conversation is of heaven. In verse 20. For our conversation is in heaven from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So our conversation is heavenly. We talk of what heaven is. Every ambassador, if you meet them, they always talk about their country that they come from, that they represent. What is the kingdom that you represent? The kingdom of God. 
the kingdom of God. You represent the kingdom of God. You don't represent this world. You don't talk about this world. This world system and its way of doing things have passed away from you and you're living by kingdom principles. The world says, give, get as much as you could and hold as much as you can. But now that you're born again, you've come into realization where you say, give and it shall be given unto me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. Running over, men shall give unto me. I don't live by my getting now, I live by my giving. That's the difference. It's altogether a different kingdom that we're living in. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. But the world says, seek first the things of the world and the wrong way of doing things. But God says, it's the other way, other way about. It's the other way about. If we start seeking first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added into our lives. He never said that they'll be subtracted. He never said that it will be subtracted, but he said it will be added into your life. So put yourself together to understand the kingdom principles are different. The new man is different to the old person. And you don't have the new and the old living together. It's abnormal for a person to have two natures, and God didn't give us two natures. Either we are in the Adamic race or we are in, the, we are in Christ Jesus. When Christ came to us, the old nature died. And the new nature was formed by him. The new nature, he came into our lives, he mingled his spirit with our spirit and we have become one with him. Now we have the nature of Christ. 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 17 says, He that is one with the Lord is one spirit. He that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. It tells that you don't have two natures no more. If you are joined to the Lord, then you have only one nature. So we always blame the, the second nature that we possess. We kind of think, well, I have this sinful nature. I got to obey the Lord also, and then I also also ought to obey my old nature. Then you get born again. Or get a revelation if you are born again, who you are in Christ Jesus and what you can do in Christ Jesus. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. You have become one spirit with the Lord. No more two. We were, we were in the Adamic uh, race. We, were, we had the Adamic nature in us. The fallen nature. We were sin. We were sinful. We were, we, we were joined together with the devil. We had a contract with the devil. But the day we came to Christ, we detached ourselves and we have been we have come into a new relationship with Jesus Christ. All things have passed away. All things have become new in our life. Walk in the newness of life. I always like to talk about the new person because the new person has so many victories to enjoy. The new person is not somebody who is distracted <clears throat> by the things that are around him. The new man is always concentrating on what Christ has achieved in his life. In the book of 1 John, or, or 2 Peter, I'm sorry, and chapter three, uh, chapter 1 and verse 3. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse, 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. According as his divine power has given unto us all things pertaining to life and godliness. Now Peter was somebody who walked with Jesus Peter lived by revelation. Peter also had, I mean, he was one of the impetuous Peters. I mean, he was the one who was always running his mouth and he made so many mistakes in life. But still, he was the first preacher who was able to preach and draw 3,000 souls into the kingdom of God. Because he was learning. He was in the learning period. But when the Holy Ghost came upon him, he became a new creation. He became an altogether a new creation. A brand new creation. And he was the first preacher who started preaching the gospel on the day of Pentecost. 50th day from the day that Christ uh, rose again. So we find, according to the divine, according to his divine power, hath given unto us all things pertaining to life and godliness. 
the life that you're living now, that word life there is talking about your new life, your new nature. It's talking about your new nature, the God-given life. The life that we had was our old nature, but the life that we now have is the life that Christ has given us. So all things have been given unto us pertain to the new life and that we may live godly. Godliness is some, has nothing to do with the kind of, you know, religious way of approaching things and let, letting people know how religious you are. Godliness is living a life that is set apart. Godly life is living always for the glory of God where you say, Father, I'm here to do your will. It's not my will, but your will. And godliness is very profitable. Godliness is profitable. In 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8, 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8, it says, we'll come back to this scripture again, for bodily exercise profiteth little. It's not, all, it's not all bad for us to have some body exercises, but bodily exercise profiteth Little, that word little there means for a short while. Back again, you've got to go back to it. But godliness, against godliness concerning, uh, compared to bodily exercise, godliness profiteth unto all things. Even good health, you cannot depend, depend on all your exercises for good health. You might say, I'll be the most healthiest person if I do this, if I do that, and if I do all my um, exercises rightly, but if you're not godly, you can, you, you, you can always come to a place where you, you might think, well, I'm, I'm doing everything that I need to do for my body, but why am I so tormented with thoughts in my mind? Demons don't care how much of, uh, exercises you do. They can hit you, and they can hit you hard if you're not walking godly. Demons are around us. That's why the Bible says, it says, he's as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's not, he, he, he cannot devour everyone, but whom he can devour. It's important that we have godliness. It's not bad for us to be a person who is doing our exercises rightly, but your spiritual battle is not fleshly. In other words, you have a spiritual battle which you can't fight in the flesh. You can say, I'm a very strong character. If demons come against me, I can just box them. You'll, just be, you'll be just beating about in the air. You won't cast out one demon. You won't hurt one demon. By all your physical strength. In fact, he's after your physical strength. That you may walk in disobedience to God. That he can use your spiritual strength, he can use your physical strength to create havoc in the church. Or to be a slave of the devil with all your physical strength. So you might be physically strong enough to handle things. I say, I can handle all the any sickness comes. I mean, I'm I'm so prepared for it. My body can handle it. My body can handle it. No. The Bible says, flesh profits nothing. Flesh profits nothing. Jesus said, Jesus said, when I'm taken up, the verse before that, what and if you shall see the son of man ascend up to where he came, where he was before, what happens to you when I'm gone? He's speaking to the disciples now. And then he said, the flesh, it is the spirit that gives life. That's the old English where it says quicken. It's a spirit that gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The flesh profits nothing compared to the spiritual life that you've received. Because you can only wage a war against the enemy 
by spiritual words not by your physical state of condition that you are in it's your words that come out of your mouth words that you speak out of your mouth how much of word are you filled with when you speak out of the abundance of your heart you are full of the word of god whenever you speak you always have a word whenever you speak you might say you mean to say i must be a walking bible yeah you should be one just as jesus he was the word and he became flesh and he became a walking bible the word of god became flesh although he became flesh you could see he only said i would only do what i see my father do i will teach you what my father teaches me i don't do things of my own and i can do nothing of my own he's talking about his flesh but when he said i can do all things and he did things through the power of the holy spirit that was in him as the bible says god anointed jesus of nazareth in acts chapter 6 and verse 38 i'm sorry acts chapter 10 and verse 38 how god anointed jesus of nazareth who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil he couldn't do it by his flesh power he couldn't do anything by his flesh power he said i do all things by the spirit how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and power who went about doing good healing all that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him you could also put yourself into the scripture and say how god has anointed me put your name there and put from where you come with the holy ghost and power he has done the same thing into your life too he has put the holy ghost which is powerful in you and you are supposed to be going around doing good and healing all that are oppressed of the devil for god is with you god is for you god is not against you if you give up on life you are going to be like a floating fish but if you make up your mind you're going to go upstream you're going to change your way of thinking and start making some moves and your faith is been activated you're energized in your faith faith is the power that you have you can energize your faith by the words that come out of your mouth by the words that come out of your mouth i can speak any old thing i want to yeah you can speak any old thing you want to but if you want to live the victorious life the new life then you're supposed to speak what god says when jesus said in a, in john chapter 6 and verse 63 he said the words that i speak they are spirit and they are life and you can put yourself there and say now i'm taking those very words that jesus spoke what almighty god has spoken from the book of acts from the book of genesis to the book of revelation i'm going to take those into my life and i'm going to speak forth and they're going to be spiritual and they're going to be life giving satan is not worried at all if you speak about anything else apart from the word i mean he he i mean that's okay with him if you speak things that are neutral religious stuff is not going to cast out demons you have to speak spiritual words you have to speak the words of jesus to cast out demons most of the time we believe our present position my present position is weak i'm weak i'm weak how can i prolong i'm how can i i how can i i can i can't even think that i would ever overcome if you can't think you will never make it the bible says in joel 3:10 it says let the weak say that i'm strong let the weak let the sick say that i'm healed let the poor say that i'm rich let the confused say i'm at peace let the weak say i'm strong that looks a lie but not in the eyes of god may god sees you strong god sees you strong let the weak say 
that I am strong. Let the weak say that I am strong. It's good for you to say what you, what you really want to happen in your life. It didn't say let the weak say that I am weak. Flesh would say let the weak say that I am weak. I am weak, I am sickly, I'm, I feel broke. I feel that I'll never make it. Now it says to the weak, let the weak say that I'm strong. It's not just positive speaking. It is speaking the word of God. It is speaking the word of God. And you say, I declare what I believe. Proverbs 23 and verse 6 says, As a man thinketh, so is he. Where is your thinking? What are your thoughts? What are the things that you're thinking all the time? That's exactly what you're going to be. Proverbs 23 and verse 7. As a man thinketh, so is he. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Our thoughts can keep us bound. Our words can keep us bound. Our actions can keep us bound. We, we, we'll, we would always say, what I, I would believe what I see. Seeing is believing after all. Well, Jesus said believing is seeing. Are you going to believe what Jesus said or are you going to believe what everybody says? Seeing is believing. What scripture is it? Well, Thomas said, yeah, if I see, I would believe. But Jesus said, blessed are the ones who don't see. Thomas said, if I would touch, if I can see him, if I can touch his um, nail-pierced hands, and I would believe. He said, no, blessed are the ones who are not seen. Blessed are the ones who have not seen. Jesus said, after he raised Lazarus from the dead, in John eleven forty. He said, didn't I tell you that you will see the glory of God if you believe? Jesus said unto her, said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe that you would see the glory of God. Now which comes first, believing or seeing? Believing. Didn't I tell you? He said that in verse 25, he was trying to build Martha's faith. Is I am the resurrection. I am the life. Even if he is dead, he shall live. He said all that. He said, but then she didn't believe. Jesus said unto Martha, I am the resurrection. I am the one who can bring a man to stand. That's what it simply means. And the life, he that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. But he, she could not be convinced with it. What did she say? Oh yeah, someday I know, Lord, that he will live. Verse 26. And whatsoever, whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Oh, you mean to say Christians don't die? No, they sleep. And they are awakened in heaven. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never face defeat in life. Do you believe this? Jesus was very strong when he came. He was trying to build. He knew that he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead, but he wanted somebody to stand with him. And the next verse we find, she said unto him, Yea, Lord, yes, Lord. Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ. That's good that you believe that he is the Christ, the Son of, Son of God, who should come down, who should come into the world. Yeah, she said, yeah, I believe so. And the next verse, and when, he sh when she had said so, she went away. She never inter interceded and prayed 
and said yes lord you come to the tomb raise my brother up she never had any faith she had a general faith yes i believe that you are the son of god you are christ but i don't think you can raise my brother up from the dead see we who are saved we have come to the conclusion that salvation is the only thing that has happened to all salvation is the only good thing that has happened to us and we are now born again we got a heavenly ticket in hand but right now we don't have any hope at all in living i don't think my things my body can line up i don't think i can i can make ends meet i don't think i can really do things in life better she didn't believe that she scooted off yeah lord i believe that thou art christ the son of the god we should come into the world and the next verse she just slipped out of jesus and when she had said uh, she had so said she went away and called mary her sister secretly now don't make a big noise jesus is outside okay now if he comes in we got to prepare a meal for the group that that has come with him you remember what happened last time we had a problem we got him down and then he started preaching and then you never helped me so now don't get him inside the home secretly let's do it so secretly jesus has come this is a funeral house now we don't want him to spoil the funeral he comes start teaching here and he says that he's the resurrection and all kinds of thing we don't want any changes here let the funeral go on the master is come and calleth for thee and the words don't say there that jesus called for but anyway maybe he would have inquired okay let's take it as if he has inquired about mary and the next verse we see as soon as she heard that as soon as she heard that she rose quickly not secretly she let everybody know she rose quickly although martha was not too happy about jesus coming and spoiling the funeral service jesus comes where maybe he might raise the dead or he might start healing sick people here or maybe so we don't want all that here we are just to a quiet funeral we're going to mourn for the next few days after all these three days have passed we are on the fourth day now we want to mourn but but mary was different because she had heard the word she sat at the feet of jesus she heard the word and the good thing that was in her was not taken away and came to him and the next verse says now jesus was not uh, not yet come into the town but he was in the place where martha met him jesus didn't come he said i'm going to wait here because i have some important business to do here i want to go raise lazarus up i'm not come for a meal i'm not come to martha i'm not come to martha's kitchen the special restaurant that to have a good meal with all my 82 disciples well he had 12 plus 70 82 of them that's why martha was so upset the previous time he came and said you have left me to cook everything and then <clears throat> now jesus wants so the next verse verse 31 i'm taking you verse by verse because there is a lot of a lot of meat there and the jews which were with her in the house and comforted her when they saw mary when they saw mary that she rose up hastily not secretly not not shying away from the crowd after all martha came and secretly said but she made things hastily she was so excited we ought to be so excited 
about Jesus. We ought to be so excited knowing that he's the king of kings and the lord of lords, worshipping him, praising him. It's so much of excitement. She rose up hastily and went out. Uh, <clears throat> followed her, saying, she goeth into the grave to weep there. But she was not going to the grave to weep there. She was going to meet the master. She was not going back to the grave. She was going to the master. You don't have to go to your dead burial grounds. You don't have to go to your dead places and start thinking about, oh my God, what happened to my past? What happened to me? You got to go to the master, go with him to your dead places and let him speak the word of life to your dead situation. Long years back, I preached a message. <clears throat> speak to your Lazarus. Speak to your Lazarus. Not speak about Lazarus. If you're going to speak about Lazarus, you will say, yeah, this is what, how he was and he was sick. And then all of a sudden he died and you try to wake him up. He never woke up and then this other funeral is taking place. That's talking about Lazarus. But then he spoke to Lazarus and he said, Lazarus, come forth. She rose up hastily and out and followed her saying, she goeth into the, I mean, every one of the Jews who were there, they followed Mary, because Mary was excited. Here there was a funeral going on. But she was so excited, life has come to our home. Jesus has come to our home. He has come to visit us. Let me forget about all my mourners. I'm going to meet the master and see what he has to say about this situation. In the next verse, then when Mary was come, where Jesus was, and he saw him, she fell down at his feet. Jesus is always after the feet of Jesus. I'm sorry, Ma Mary was always after the feet of Jesus. She was a worshiper. Even the previous time, she sat at the feet of Jesus. Even in the morning period, she went. She didn't stop worshiping Jesus. Oh, Jesus, why did you come? We are mourning all out here and you don't want... No, she was the same. She was a worshiper. She saw him, but we don't see the reaction of Martha in such a manner. When you're going through bad times in life, don't stop worshiping the Lord. You should be worshiping the Lord. And she fell down at his feet saying, Lord, if you have been here, my brother had not died. I mean, that's true. But now he's here. Just because he was four days late, it doesn't mean that his, that his brother will not live. You know, sometimes we count the days, Lord, if you were here, this would have happened. If you were here, Lord, you missed it. Why didn't you help me out in this situation? Why didn't you protect me? Why didn't you do this? But he can do something now for you. Maybe if it is after, I mean, even if Jesus came after 40 days, he would have still raised him up. That's who Jesus is. He's life. He's life. He's life. Nothing impossible with him. All things are possible with God. There's nothing impossible with the Lord. And the next verse we find, what did Jesus say? When Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews weeping with, weeping which came with her, all the Jews that were at home, she drew them all to meet the master. You know, when you're an excited person, you will draw lots of people to Christ. Even in your funeral, even in your, when you're mourning around with your, with your problem, you will still draw people to Christ. People say, oh, I, if Jesus was there, he would have done this for me, he would have done that for me, and I don't feel like witnessing to people now. I don't feel like even talking about the love of Jesus to others. See, look at me. I mean, I'm, I'm so messed up in life. I'm mourning. God turns your mourning into dancing. God can turn things around. Don't keep mourning. 
because you're, you're depending on what's happening around you today. But let God take care of your tomorrow. He's the God of yesterday, today and forever. He's the same for you. Wherever you go, whatever you do, he's the same. Trust him. Obey him. Believe in him. And he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And the next verse we find and said, where have you laid him? Now Jesus was interested in the body of Lazarus. And they said unto him, Lord, come and see. Next verse. Jesus wept. The next verse. Then said the Jews, behold how he loved him. In the next verse. And some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even the man should have not died? You know, you may question things in your life and you go through situations in life. Lord, couldn't you have done this or that? You know, God can do a lot of things. <clears throat> he can move in your situation. He can do things that are impossible. You might say, <clears throat> I've tried my best to overcome things in my life. But God says, <clears throat> I can. I can do all the things in your life. Don't give up on things. Just because a funeral has taken place, don't think that Christ cannot raise you up. You must have everything dead in my life. My bones are dry. My flesh is weak. My mind, I can't even focus. But God says, <clears throat> all things are possible. Nothing is impossible with God. Absolutely. Nothing is impossible with God. He's the one who said, I'm the resurrection and I'm the life. I'm the resurrection and I'm the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. You know, if you really want to see a miracle happen in your life, You've got to keep your focus on Jesus. You've got to keep your focus on Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. You're faithful. You are good, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your promises that are good, Father. In your word that you have promised us good things, Father. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. You're the eternal God, Father. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Maybe we'll sing some songs. <clears throat> Let's minister unto him. Hallelujah. The Bible says he's our healer. He's a good God. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. We magnify your name. We glorify you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Amazing grace. Hallelujah. We praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your eternal word, Lord. You sent your word and you healed us, Lord. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Father. Glorify your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. We shall dwell in the house of God forever and ever. Thank you, Father. We praise you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Lord. We just bless you. Hallelujah. Let's minister unto him in song. Let's begin to thank him. Hallelujah. Maybe we can rise up to our feet and even as we we partake in the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that his body was broken, was bruised for our healing. The Bible says by his wounds, we are totally and completely healed. He's a covenant keeping God. He keeps his word. And as we believe his word, 
Bible says no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against us, we need to condemn. So as we begin to sing and thank God, let's God, you are a covenant keeping God. You heal all our wounds. Thank you, Father, for your word. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, that your body was broken for our healing. You shed your precious blood so that our sins can be forgiven, Lord. We thank you that we are the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, that this is a cup of blessing, Lord. Thank you, Lord, as we walk in union with you, Lord. Every day, Father, knowing that you became sin for us, Lord, that we might be the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ. As we partake, Lord, we know that this brings healing to us, Father. Thank you, Lord. A restoration to our bodies and to our minds, Father. Health and healing, Lord. Victories to our lives, Father. We thank you, Father. You are such a faithful God. You keep all your promises, Father. Thank you, Father, for your goodness, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Let's partake together.
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We receive health and healing to our bodies, Lord. Thank you, Father. It's a cup of blessing that we can receive, Father. Health and healing, Lord. Thank you, Father. We can walk in divine health, Lord. Walk in the favor of God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. It's what you promised in your word, God. Every good and perfect gift that comes from above comes down from the Father of lights. Oh, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's continue to worship him. And as you have been led by the Lord, you can bring in your tithes and offerings. And let's make it a time of worship. Let's say, God, we bring unto you, Lord, our first fruits, Lord, and we worship you, Father. Thank you, Lord. You are the God who has brought increase into my life, blessings into my life. The Bible says that every seed that we sow into his kingdom, he gives us 30, 60, and 100 fold according to your faith. So let's believe and be joyful givers unto the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm alive because of your blood. I'm forgiven because of your blood. I am righteous because of your blood. Jesus, your blood has given Love 
righteous because of your blood Jesus your blood has given me Praise God. Father God, we thank and praise you for your goodness and your mercies and your love and your favor and for all the good that you've done for us. And Father, every good and every perfect gift that you've given us, oh God, health and healing, strength and power, prosperity and peace, oh God. And Father, this day, <clears throat> as we partake in this offering, and Lord, as we come before you, and Lord, be being partners with the kingdom work, O oh God, that your word says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. Running over, men shall give unto our bosom. Father, I thank you for your goodness and your mercies that would follow us all the days of our life. And Lord, each and every one of them, as they have purposed in their hearts, as they have believed and brought forth their tithes and their offerings, that you will honor them, Father. You will bless them, you will keep them. You will, Lord, uh, as they go, that your blessing would continue. They are blessed in the city, they are blessed in the field. And Lord, whatever they place their hands upon shall prosper. Thank you, Jesus, for all the good that you do for each and every one of them, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and see you next week. It's next Sunday. You can purchase some books if you like to downstairs. We have some books. And be blessed.